Hello everyone, uh, this is Siri from Zurich and welcome to our first uh, video of the how to, do typo type, how to do typography in Blender series. Uh, today is about how to build typography from scratch in Blender with the subdivision surface modifier. And if you are finished, it's going to look something like that. <laughs> Um, we're starting by setting up a new scene and going from the general file uh, you have by default a cube in the scene. Um, you go into the modifier section and you select the subdivision surface modifier, put the numbers up to about three and shades move. So if you go into the top view, so you have the grid you can orientate yourself on and then you have to activate on the top right the x-ray toggle vision, I don't know how it's called, um, so you always select the, the vertices even if they're underneath the other vertices. So if you watch from here, you have this point and this point. And by extruding, um, so just hitting E, you can build your letters and as you can see, I always try to orientate myself a little bit on the grid so that everything has the same height and the same thickness, so it's going to look um, just like construct, constructed from the beginning. Yeah, so after creating the H, I'm gonna write the word hot because it's just a very short and understandable word. So after creating the H, I wanna create the O. And um, I'm going to do the same as I did with the H, just like subdivision surface modifier and then uh, going to edit mode and starting to edit the letter O. And now if you rotate, um, you, can uh, you can select this edge loop and rotate it and so you can get like curves into the letters. Um, by hitting R, for example, and Z, because I'm watching from you only rotate it along the Z axis so you can um, do it as I did it here in the video. If you want to connect those two things, you have to hit Command E and then bridge edge cut loops. I don't know something like that. Uh, I never, I can never remember the name. Um, so it's connecting these two single pieces of sausage into one closed letter. Afterwards, it's just uh, a lot of adjusting. So now I'm creating the letter T. Um, here also the same, like I try to make it the same height, the same thickness as the other letters. And now I'm already thinking on how I want to connect this whole composition. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> now, Everything that comes now is for me very intuitive. I'm a very chaotic, uh, not really prepared designer. I, I just like do a lot of stuff and fail a lot. Rim is always a little bit angry with me um, because I am like that, but um, yeah, that's how life goes. He's, uh, he's better in preparing, but I strongly recommend you to make some doodles of what you want to create and how you want to make it look like, how you connect the different letters, because in your head it always looks a whole lot different than in 3D. And also if you're coming from 2D as a designer, as a type designer, there are so many factors that play into what your type is going to look like in the end. So be prepared, think how and which materials you want to do it in because it all has a really great influence in what it's going to look like afterwards. Yeah, here I am fast forwarding into the flames. Oh my God, why am I talking like that? Okay, um, yeah, I'm fast forwarding. Uh, you can see it's just very, very easy to make changes. If you don't like like a, a curve or, or how it's like formed, you. You can simply by scaling, by by you know grabbing and and you know moving it. Uh, you can do so many things. And here I am 
as I know, because I did this in the past, I am about to do this like very disgusting kind of approach on how to connect the letters. But um, maybe you're gonna have the same problem as I had. Um, I created this disgusting arm from the T and I realized it doesn't really work with the O and with the H. So I tried to delete the arm, but if you just select the vertices and then delete them as you would delete anything else in Blender, um, it wouldn't work because you would tear a hole um, into, into the letter and you want this like this uh, sausage um, clay kind of thing to stay as a whole thing. So what you can do um, is selecting the vertices that you want to delete and then right click and dissolve the vertices. So they are dissolved and the form like kind of springs back to what it would be without those vertices. Um, I'm gonna do the same again with, the, with this part of the arm because it still looks like shit. Well, it really does look like shit. <laughs> I'm always making fun of myself when I do something horrible. And, um, you know, it's really okay that something looks horrible. You know, I mean, everything just takes time. You can't fast forward your knowledge in, in Blender and you cannot fast forward your knowledge in typography, especially typography is something that is so hard to do. And it, need, it needs so much time. You can't just, you know, do something and master it by watching a tutorial. You have to invest a lot of time and energy and love, especially love, to get really good at it. I mean, most of the times I'm also like really crazy about type because I'm, it's just so hard to do. But you get better with every time you do it and the more different and vari differentiation and variety you bring into it, you're gonna get better. Um, also, this technique is very, very cool because you can not just doing this flame kind of style that I'm doing here. You can also do some water, like this water droplet organic thing. You can do it like plants. You can do it also three dimensional. I mean, here I'm just like creating on this plate, but you could also do it, um, you know, three dimensional that the, that the letters like they also move along the Z axis, not only along the X and the Y axis. So there is a lot of possibility going on there. And um, always like take care of how the letters uh, work together. Here you can see that I'm adjusting, like um, creating these special forms for the other letters to kind of flow uh, into each other. Yes, and after I think I'm happy with the letters, I just add some uh, spheres that I will um, edit with the edit a little bit at different forms and now we come to setting up the scene. Um, Remo always lights his scenes with HDRIs which is also something very very cool to do. Um, we have a very cool tutorial on that too but I am more of the backdrop photo studio artificially created scene light kind of type. I don't know how to say it better. So I kind of try to aid like in a real photo studio, I try to create a backdrop. Um, the, I do that by adding a cube to the scene and in the modifier section add the bevel modifier to create these round edges um, that a backdrop usually has. Um, the, the, the larger this curve is, the, the less you're gonna see the, the, the the color ramp, I don't know, <laughs> the, the gradient, yeah, the gradient um, in the back, like changing from the wall to the floor. Okay, if you um, apply in the modifier section, if you apply the modifier and then go into the edit mode, you choose um, the faces you want and hit com control or command and I for inverting the selection and delete the faces that you don't need. So you just have this backdrop kind of form afterwards. Um, when it's not really right from the format, that's not a problem. You can always scale it um, along the different axes to make it fit. Also, if you go into the camera mode, which is also kind of a dynamic um, 
work so you have always have to check like how does it look in the camera how does it look on the scene what can i change that it looks different it's a very you know organic pr procedure it's not like you can do something in the scene and it's good um, because it's right you know it's very going back going forth changing things it's a lot about that very intuitive and i think very good to start with so yeah, here I'm kind of happy by hitting shade smooth. Don't forget that you can also get like these very hard edges um, out from the backdrop. This is um, something that is just trial and error. As I said before, I am a very chaotic uh, and intuitive designer, um, which is uh, driving Rimo crazy at times, but I really need time to just like try everything because I haven't, if I haven't tried it, I, I will always think about it. So I'm like doing stuff and I'm adjusting all the time. So right now I, um, I added a light to the scene. I like to work um, with this like studio, um, studio like area lights that are like a soft box and, um, if you adjust them like in a like in a photography set you can um, kind of build these very museum type like sculpture scenes where everything looks really fine and and really high quality um, so i always go back to my photography knowledge in setting up a scene uh, it's really cool if you work with blender and if you try to do anything realistic that you kind of read yourself into um, photography because it gives you a lot of knowledge on how to handle a set also digitally because it works technically the same so yeah after i worked out this scene um, i am looking at it and i'm thinking like yeah these letters could use a little better material so i'm trying to do this metal material and after looking at it, I think like it would be really cool if it had this like this fish eye effect on the type, like where it's like really stretched out on the sides. Um, also, if you have knowledge about cameras, you learn that the smaller the focal length is, is like the smaller this number is, um, the the more you have this fish eye effect. So by adjusting this parameter in the camera settings you can get uh, a totally different result of the same scene just by altering that number. And it's really important that you also always consider that you have this possibility to create something totally different. And uh, then I do a first render, I realize I did this, like the focal length is way too small, so I'm gonna adjust it later. and. Um, and now it's just experimenting and i will fast forward here that you can see like how many things i am changing in a scene before i think it's okay and yeah give yourself time type is a very very hard thing to do there is no fast forward way to do it and to learn it properly you just have to gain your own access and you have just you just have to spend like hours and hours of working to really get good at it so yeah take your time be okay with making mistakes be okay with starting new and try to experiment try to be wild try to create something new yeah and that's about what i have to say today uh, it was really nice that you guys watched the video until here if it would be really cool if you leave a like and a subscription and if you have any like comments or feedback or questions just um, write a comment below or write us on our instagram account which i will link in the description thanks very much for your attention and bye